Space 101.1 FM, KMGP, welcomes you to Broken Alaska, the world's only improvised radio drama series. Though the locals of Broken fully support their hometown, they aren't above an occasional trip to neighboring Austinville when necessary. After all, sometimes spim just isn't going to cut it. What happens when Kitty and Denise head to the Austinville Library to return Shh. some... Overdue books. Let's find out. Denise, thanks so much for coming with me out here. It's really nice to have a companion in a library, you know? Don't you just love the smell of books? Yes, I do. This trip's been so great. I mean, there's just so many more places here than Broken, but 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 Broken is home, and Austinville is, isn't anything compared oh, to Broken. Oh, yeah, totally agree. But, I mean, look around. Shh. Oh, I'm so sorry. They have a whole shelf about foraging mushrooms. What? You know, it's cool. Like, Mark has a good amount of books, but mm -hmm. it's just so nice to be able to actually borrow one with my library card. You know, that's so true. He always lends them, and it's just so different than borrowing. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's Situation. a book. Bring it back when you want. No, I want a due date. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of thrilling mm -hmm. when you have a fine. Oh, like, they're going to charge you if you don't bring it back. And, you know, it's always fun to see all the hodgepodge of people. Like, every time I come, it's like, who's going to be there? That's so true. Hey, yeah. look, there's one right yeah. now on the computer. Oh, yeah. Hey. They like to hang around a computer, and they're all looking at those uh, adult sites and stuff. Shh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I always get a thrill from that. Okay, be quiet, okay. There's so many things to do out here. Not that I like Austinville, uh -huh. but... Denise. Yes. Something I'm really excited to show you. Oh boy, what? Bowling. Bowling? Yes. They have bowling lanes in Austinville. You're kidding. No. You know what else they have? What? Parking meters. What? Yeah. We have to pay for our parking here. It is still Austinville, and I gotta say, I am a broken native, as you know, mm -hmm. so it always have a place in my heart. Sometimes, I just wish we had some of this stuff back home. Think how cool it would be to have your own broken library card. Oh my goodness. And pay fines to the broken town council. That would be amazing. But where would we even fit a library? Oh, I got it. What? Mr. Munsky's, that old bake shop. <gasps> You're right. Yeah, that's been dilapidated since before I was born. Mr. Munsky's. That's so great. Maybe we should work there. <gasps> I've always wanted to be a librarian. Oh, you'd be such a good one. I know. Shh. See. Oh, you got me. You, no, we should do it. I think, you know, we can make this work. We don't have to come all the way to crappy Austinville to yeah. check out a book and pay our fines and pay for, well, pay for parking, yes. But... We can check out a book in our own backyard if we yeah. wanted to. Okay, new plan. Bowling, parking meters, then let's go talk to Heather. But also we should go to that ice cream shop they have here because it's very good. Oh, good point. Okay, yes, I like that. And Agenda. then back to Broken. Back to Broken, talk to Heather. We're going to get a library. Yes! Yes! Shh! A library in Broken. What a great idea. Kitty and Denise make the drive back to town and go straight to ask head of the city council, Heather O'Hearn, how they should proceed. Uh, yes. Yes, Miss Linwood, I, I know it was your favorite pothole, but it, it's so great that it's been filled in and smooth rides across. Yes. Thank you for calling. Y yes. Have a great day. Hello, Heather. Heather! Heather! Hello, ladies. How are you doing this bright morning? I am fine, Kitty. How are you? We have just come up with the best idea. Okay. So, we were over in the worst place ever. Austinville. <clears throat> Austinville. Ugh. And we couldn't help but getting a little uh, sad when we were walking around the Aww. very many amenities they have. Yes. In particular, the library. Oh, have you I been? Love libraries. I yes. Know. That it's... smell. Mm, uh, I, I should make a perfume out of that. Oh, you know, when you go into the library, it's great. But when you go over to the card catalog and you pull them out <laughs> and you smell the Dewey Decimal System. Oh. oh. oh yeah. Now, just envision for a moment, Heather, if we had one of those right here in Broken. We right wouldn't have to here. drive oh. all the way to Austin. Our own card catalog? Our own library. <gasps> envision it. Oh. Our own books, our own cards, our own 
library fines. Hmm. Fines. Little money making opportunity there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 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 Every little bit of helps, right? Right. And we've already got everything figured out. Kitty and I would work there, mm-hmm. and and it could be in Mr. Munsky's old shop. Yeah, that's been nothing's been there for a long time, right? My goodness, that is a great idea. I, I, where are we going to get enough? Books. I have a little book collection of my own I could put in there. Yeah, and oh. you know, I have a ton about moose tracking. Oh. I could do a whole section. Mm. Yeah, people love that. Oh, they are great books. I've read all of them. You know, come to think of it, a lot of people in this town have a little book collection here and a little book collection there. And Maybe we could talk to Father Francis. I'm sure he has some lovely religious books. Oh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. We could even ask Mark if he'd like to bring some of his books over. Well, he'd have to know that they were going to the library and they weren't going to go back to his shop. Well, he could lend them to us and then we could let people borrow them. Yeah, it could work. Well, got everything. I think we could have a viable, real library here in Broken. Um... I have a couple of collections myself. My mother left me this vintage collection of romance novels. Romance novels? Oh, ooh la la. I know. I'm a Harlequin girl. What can I say? I've always been in love with Fabio. The way he stands with his chest and that six, I think think it's actually an eight pack. And he, his oh. arms so big, and he holds. Oh, I see. You've got a copy beautiful right, right here on your desk. Oh, <laughs> well, that is okay. actually is vintage. That? It's from my mom's collection. It's Joanna Lindsay, and it's an original Fabio. Uh, Heather, mm-hmm. is that the mayor's face taped over Fabio? Well, Fabio's face leaves a little to be desired. I happen to like the way the mayor looks. Although, has anyone gotten a picture of Stewie yet? Working on it. Don't you worry. If you're on board, Heather. I am on board. Maybe we could get George and Bert to help build some shelves. Oh, oh, good idea. You know, yeah, you're always thinking about the smart logistics. It's a plan. It's a plan. Let's go. We got to go start getting our books together. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm excited. I'll get working on the permits immediately. Bye, Heather. Bye, Bye, Thank you, ladies. Bye, Heather. You're listening to Broken Alaska, radio's only improvised ongoing drama series on Space 101.1 FM. Visit us on Facebook at Broken AK and catch up on previous episodes on our podcast for free from iTunes. Back in Broken, the whole town is buzzing with excitement about the plans for a new Broken Library. Joey, Annika, and Rose are in Brooks Books and Other Things going through a stack of books Mark has decided to donate to the cause. Let's find out how it's going. Check this out. Fitness through fumigation. That's hilarious. I love going through Mark's things. Well, it was nice of him to let us do this while he's gone fishing at Mosquito Lake. It really was. Oh, look, there's a whole stack of Encyclopedia Britannicas here. I don't know. Do you think we need it? I guess the library is the best place for an encyclopedia set, right? But we need to make sure that everyone knows it's from 1942. Yeah, things are a little different. Ooh. Oh, there's some questionable stuff in this encyclopedia. Okay. Ooh, okay. Great God, it's like pictures. a cavern in here. Yeah. I had no idea the back room was this spacious. He's got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Hold on. This one's tucked underneath it. Okay. Ooh, that must be special stuff. Well, I don't know. There's a big cardboard box. <laughs> Look on the top. There's a big scrawl of black Sharpie. It says Mickey Shade. Do you guys know? Mickey Shade? Are there Mickey Shade books? Hey, uh, I Mickey don't know any Shane. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. look, no, look, it's a collection of paperback novels. Oh, cool. Oh, you know what these are? Look at these. They're like old school noir detective novels. Oh, fun. Oh, cool. These? Look at these covers. It doesn't seem to be Mark's style, but... What's yeah. some of the books in there? It, it kind of yeah. looks like it's a series. It's called the oh. Shattered Series. <laughs> oh, my gosh, look like at the covers that. of these. Fedoras oh, one, and Dark one. Alley. Okay, here, 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 hold okay. on. Yeah. Yeah, this one's called Darkest Before the Door. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. okay here, you uh-huh. hold on. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, Ricky Gabion stared out of the corner window of his office into the twilight mists coming up the harbor. <laughs> he nursed the remains of three fingers of Maker's Mark, neat, and inhaled deeply, taking his Marlboro down to the filter. <laughs> <laughs> He'd left Melbourne for this. They'd all seem like such good ideas at the time. Strip malls, hotels, motels. He'd played them all like an accordion player doing Lily Marlene on the sidewalk of a cheap oh, French cafe. Like pulling and pushing, straining to make the tune clear amid the discord around him. And it had gotten him as far as shattered... 
Uh, Alaska. Huh? Shattered? Wait a minute. Okay. It, All right. What's, oh, here, here. What's it didn't book? surprise Gabby and when Violet entered the room. Looking over his left shoulder, he noticed that she was wearing that burgundy da Vinci dress he'd given her years <gasps> ago. It still fell in just the right ways about her body, allowing the moonlight to highlight her plunging neckline. Whoa. As experienced as Gabby and was, he still was surprised to see she'd chosen to accessorize with a browning 9mm pistol. Did this say shattered Alaska? Yeah, That's it weird. does. Wait, wait, wait. And wait, don't you have a Givenchy dress? Well, of course I do, Annika. All right, well, let's see what huh. this one is, if this is any different. Okay. This, this is okay. called Violet and Violet. <laughs> <laughs> <Silly Okay. titles. laughs> okay. All right, ready? With a final wipe of his old bar rag, Jack removed the last traces of drying blood from the dark, polished wood of the harbor pilot's bar. Oh, what? what? Uh, that's what it says. Huh. Dimly, he recalled the sound of a bugle before he'd blacked out. Violet must have run out the door to some Sheriff Morgan. One minute he'd been talking with her about grapes and soil chemistry and Steinbeck. The next he'd been hit by a punch that felt like a bag of bricks that had been soaked in cement. You guys, huh. there's some receipts oh, in this box. Wait, wait. Look, here's this other one. It's called uh, The Sheriff Always Meows Twice. <laughs> okay, oh, that's God. a silly one, right? Okay. There was a hot searing light coming from the naked bulb that dangled from the cracked plaster ceiling. The light hurt, and when she tried to raise a hand for shade, Susan noticed that her right arm wouldn't move. Looking down, she saw the silvery gray duct tape that bound her arms and ankles to old metal folding chairs she was sitting on. What? Susan said. What's going on? A man leaned against the far wall, his muscled bulk relaxed in the shadows, and arms crossed over his broad chest in a way that suggested the festering calm of authority. Susan saw the glint of the badge on the man's chest, and her blood pressure began to rise. Susan, said Sheriff Morgan, you know who killed Hans Frosnerson. Do I, replied Susan. Oh, yes, replied Sheriff Morgan. People think you're just a bumbling head of the city council. Time to start telling me what you know? There was a quick movement in the corner, and Susan saw the sleek black body of Wolf, the sheriff's 48-pound killer cat, oh, begin to cat. glide toward her. The sheriff continued, Now you and I both know that people are only as good as the secrets they keep, Susan, and I know that Ricky Gabion has the only Mercedes in shattered Alaska, so how about you tell me why he gave it to you? I, I can't. The sheriff gave a quick nod of command to Wolf, and the cat pounced as Susan began to scream. What is Wait this? A second. This is a little bit kind of weird here. All right, there's pay stubs in here from the Black Hyacinth Publishing Company. Pay stubs? When are they dated? Uh, they go back about 15 years, and they're, oh God, you guys, they're written out to Mark Shaughnessy. Oh, what? What? There's the? a, look at this. Look at this. What, look what I found in the box. There's this dusty photograph of Mark. He's wearing a fedora and a bushy mustache. And he's standing next to a man in a suit who's handing him an award for the Shattered series. Is shaking. Who this is about everybody is. in town. Oh, Mark Shaughnessy is writing novels as Mickey Shade. Oh my These are, god. Oh, I thought he I don't was feel good. our friend. I don't know about this anything. I'm really worried about these books. I, I don't feel good. What do people and think about us? And they're award winning so you know other people have read these. Oh dear he. I can't believe he betrayed all of us like this. You know what? I gotta go talk to Bert about this. This is bad. Yeah, this is really bad. Do. This is not good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll get back to you guys in a little okay, bit. I gotta okay. go talk to Bert. All right. You gotta talk to uh -huh. Bert. Yeah. Wow. I love old noir detective novels. Although no one's ever written one about a radio announcer. Ah well. Let's head down to Bert's shack, where Rose has come to tell Bert all about Mark's secret double life as a noir author. Bert, thank you for uh, taking the time to drink a little drink with me. You know, I really... Uh, uh, hey! Oh, oh, the, oh Louise. Hi, Rose. Oh, Rose, hello. Look, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but Bert, I have something I really need to talk to you about. Always. Do you mind, Louise? Uh, okay. Um, okay, well, look, we were in books, books, and other things. And we were looking for some books for the new Broken Library. And I discovered this whole series of detective novels. It's the Shattered series, and it's by some guy named Mickey Shade. But Oh, yes, I've read some of those books. I love them. Really? Yeah. Bert, Mark is Mickey Shade. He wrote those books. 
He never told me that. Oh my god, look, I brought it. I brought some down. Hold on. You brought some Hold on. Uh, look, for example, here's one called Love in a Mist. This is big. Okay, hold on. Okay, it was 1.30 a.m. when there was a knock on the door. Jack, wearing only his faded plaid pajama bottoms, opened the door to find Violet hiding in the depths of her hood, looking frantically up and down the alleyway behind the harbor pilot. May I come in? She whispered. As Violet squeezed past him in the narrow hallway, Jack felt the softness of her floor-length satin coat brush against his body and struggled to quiet his pounding pulse. In the bar, Jack moved to turn on the main lights, but Violet made a sharp motion of her hand and he stopped. Jack, she said, I, I just don't know where to begin. Take your time, Jack said. May I take your coat? As she peeled off the satin coat, he caught a whiff of the perfume she wore, that scent so uniquely violet and so intoxicating that Jack had to steady himself against the back of the chair. Violet, wearing a dress that was very much off the shoulder and several other places as well, suddenly turned toward him and whispered, I'm told you are a good man to ask for help if a girl found herself in trouble. Are you a good man, Jack? Because I need one. It goes on and on and on like this. I don't know. Can you guys believe this? Mac? That's rather steamy. It's uh, very steamy. Yeah. You don't get it, you guys. I think the characters in these shattered books, I think they're the people of Broken. Yeah. I think he's just changed their names. Mm. I'm really mad about this. seems like a no. real violation of our privacy. These are not so bad. Uh, they're yeah. interesting. Uh, now that you uh, mention it, Rose, I, there is a certain resemblance between us and the people in Shattered. Look, look, here's one. This one's called Paris Calling. Oh, maybe L- it's about to me, eh? Oh, let me, let me read it. Let's see here. Oh, we. Oui, oui. It was uh, six songs into Yvette's Friday night gig at the Harbour Pilot, and she was attracting the usual attention. She had a voice that was clear and strong, and even with her French accent, she could make everyone in the crowd feel sentimental. A loudmouth man from Kenai was trying to sing harmony with her as she started into Someone to Watch Over Me. He seemed to be suggesting that he could not only watch over her, but watch under her and around her, too. Oh, gross. Yvette frowned and was a fraction of a bit behind a card change. Oh, that is the worst. Monsieur, please, leave me alone. I'm trying to sing and you are a pig who is making it difficult. Can I look up fuzzily? Yeah, maybe later you and me can do more than just harmonize. Oh, he leaned in closer to her and tried to whisper in her ear. Yvette's right hand grabbed Kenai behind his neck and slammed his forehead into the keys of the Baldwin piano just as her voice arrived on the high E note she was famous for. Kenai slumped to the floor and Yvette finished the song before kicking him hard in the ribs for good measure. You see, Louise? I think oh. that one's about you. Oh, I kind of like it, no? Oh, oh no. I like Yvette. I'm not so bad. Oh, stop your complaining. Eh? Uh, Bert, uh, we need to talk to Mark about this. He's not back until tomorrow, but I, I feel really violated that he did this to us. Uh, Mark, so is there one about me? There is, but Bert, you're not going to like it. Oh, he did. Come on, Rosa. Yeah, I want to hear it. Come on, this novel is called Time... To die, Ooh. Bert. Oh. Okay, okay, hold on. Listen to this. It has that Ricky Gabbian character. In it. Okay, okay, uh, let's see. Don't you bloody move, Ricky Gabbian snarled, waving his semi automatic at Violet and Jack. They were backed into a corner of his fourth floor music observatory, huddled together against his Steinmetz baby grand. Gabbian looked Jack directly in the eyes as he said, I've had about enough of you. You couldn't stay out of my business, could you? Violet pulled away from Jack and took three steps toward Gabby and Ricky, stop, it was me. I told Jack about the hotel deal. You. Gabby's right eye twitched as he struggled to keep his composure. I want to get away, Ricky, she said. Make a clean break. Jack began to move, subtly inching closer to Gabby, his eyes locked on the gun clenched in Gabby's fist. Violet continued, I'm not who I used to be, Ricky. I've changed. I want out. Oh, no, sweetheart. Once you're in with me, there's no getting out. At least, not alive. Freeze, Ricky. Gabby and slowly looked over his right shoulder. There was Reggie, holding his Webley service pistol pointed right at him. Reggie, this is no business of yours, Gabby and snarled. Beg to differ, mate, Reggie replied. I may not be a copper anymore, but I'm not going to let you tear this town apart. Stand down, Ricky. I've read that one. 
I never realized I was Reggie. It gets worse, Bert. No, it's good. I no, like it. No, listen, listen. The room buzzed with tension for a brief moment. Then suddenly Gabion pivoted toward Reggie and both men pulled their triggers, the deafening explosion of the firing bullets blending with violet screams. Reggie and Ricky both spun slightly around and dropped to the parquet floor. As Jack moved toward Ricky, Violet raced to Reggie, who was trying to prop himself on his right arm. Save your strength, Violet said. We'll call Doc Hollis and... No, it's too late for me, love, Reggie said. Been here before. Might surprise you how often a bobby has to take a bit of lead in the line of duty. Reggie looked deeply into Violet's large, glistening eyes. If I gotta go, it, I'm glad it's for you. For once, I got it right. Remember, he said, people are more than the secrets they keep. Reggie, Violet sobbed. Reggie lifted his left hand to her cheek and touched her gently. Look after Jack, darling. If if I were twenty years young, younger. Reggie, Reggie! Violet threw her arms around his shoulder as he slumped to the floor. Jack moved to her side, Gabion's gun tucked safely in his belt. Gabion's hurt, Jack said, but he'll be okay. How's Reg? Oh, no. Through choking sobs, Violet asked, Was it worth it, Jack? Was it all worth me? I'm no good, Jack. I bring nothing but trouble everywhere I go. You should run the other way when I walk down the streets of Shattered. Jack swept her into his arms. No one's perfect, baby. Not in this messed up town. But I know a good woman when I see one, and I don't plan on letting you go. Jack kissed her upturned lips as Reggie's body lay cooling on the floor. Wow, I love that. Reggie, I mean, Bert, that was you. You are dead. I know, but in a very dramatic oh. fashion and oh. with a beautiful oh. woman, I, of course, I wouldn't have missed. I'd just like to point that out. Well, but, obviously, you know. but aren't you mad? I mean, Mark shouldn't be writing this stuff about us. I mean, oh, it's Rose. fiction, Rose. Is um, the scene. Well, and you better be glad that Brett Brickman isn't in town right now. If he read this stuff, he'd be over the roof. Uh, he's with Stewie visiting their Cajun cousins oh. right now. Oh, but the Cajun. Well, Rose, think about it. What would the story of my life really be like? But got up in the morning, made himself some oatmeal and a cup of coffee, walked down to the pier and drew some caricatures of people. Afterwards, he went to Felcher's grocery store and bought some spim. He went home and sat by the fire, alone. But, I mean, aren't you a little offended that he... Well, you know, Rose, as I've told you before, Mark can't really leave broken. And so I think we should forgive him if he has a little bit of a, a flight of fantasy about what's going on. And uh, it's got to be terribly terribly disappointing for him. I mean, he can't go to Austinville and say, go to Jean-Claude's Patisserie. He, he can go fishing at Mosquito Lake because it's within the town limits, but he, he can't go up to Tally Pass, for example. Besides, i kind of flattered, i got to say. Yes, I kind of like mine anyway, so... Uh, well, yeah, you get to be a kick-butt French singer. I mean, because I'm just, I am a kick-butt French singer. He wrote one about Denise, and she was a kick-butt mountain climber, and Katie gets to be a kick-butt hunter, and Margaret Hall's a kick-butt... Well, you run a kick-butt produce stand. No, in these books I get to be a do-nothing Violet who waits for Jack to come in and save her at the last minute every day. That's oh, not flattering. I see. No, the no, real no, 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 issue no, 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 here no. This is, is Rose. about you. No, this is not what it's about. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that is how Mark really sees you, Rose. He's... Okay, he's making money off of your lives. He's making money out of turning you into these noir characters. That doesn't make you angry? Should Mark have told us? I suppose so. Is anyone hurt by this? Not really. It's more excitement than we really have in Broken. True. Nothing happens here. You're just so sensitive, Rose. I think probably Mark didn't want us to know, and so we should just keep this whole thing a secret. Uh, well, uh, all right, I... I don't know. I guess you're right. I, I suppose if it's his secret, we shouldn't tell everyone. But, I mean, I have already told Joey, and, and I've told Kitty, and Denise, and Annika, and um, Margaret okay, Hall, so basically and everyone. Carlos. Classic. I'm not a fan of these books at all. Well, I don't know about you, but when Mark gets back, I'm going to have him autograph my copy. Oh, bonne idée. Me too. Eh? You should do it, Rose. You're going to be famous. Oh, God. The locals of Broken have all heard about Mark's books. The Shattered series is being passed around faster than Marjorie Tabone can fillet a salmon with an ulu.
everyone recognizes the character who is their alter ego in the stories, and after reading and rereading the stories, they subconsciously begin to act like their characters. Everyone is at the twisted dinghy, awaiting Mark's return. Heather, I have been wondering lately about this supposed mayor of Broken. I don't know what you're talking about, Joey. I haven't done anything wrong. Putting up with people like you saying the mayor isn't real, the mayor isn't alive. Well, I'll tell you what the mayor is. The mayor is in love with me. You wish. You wish that you'd had the love affair of your life. I'm wondering if you did something to him, because it's awfully funny if he's in love with you and not here. Tomorrow, at dawn, I'll have evidence. I told you for the last time, back off. Blackmailing doesn't look good on you. It's not a color that flatters your eyes. Well, it's one that flatters my guard dog, so for the last time... You keep your mangy little mud away from my house. Well, maybe if you stop talking to certain people of the male species... I'll talk to whomever I like, thank you very much. But they don't necessarily like you back, is that correct? I I can't believe you would say such a thing. I'm very tempted to slap you, but I'm not going to. Pugsy, down boy. La la la... All right, Louise. I've had enough of your singing all the time here in the twisted dinghy. Rose, stop. We all know you are just jealous. I'm not jealous of you. Then why do you want me to stop, eh? Because I am so talented. Because maybe, Louise, maybe just maybe all that singing of yours is getting under my nerves. What do you have, Rose? Nothing. You can't even grow anything that tastes good. That's you can't enough. even make good coffee. That's it. All you have is a kind of pretty face. Not no. even pretty. Louise, stop. Everyone in this town is tired of your singing, okay? I don't think so. I will sing until I don't want to anymore, which will be never. Louise, no one understands your silly accent, Louise. No one. No one in this town knows what you're talking about half the time. You then, just keep talking and we nod. And we say, yes, Louise, but no one knows what you're saying. Then you won't understand this. T'es une idiot. And you're annoying and no one likes you either. Well, guess what, Louise? I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. Oh, uh, what? what? What's well, look up? who's here now. Oh, Matt Catch yeah, dragged in. Yeah. Of all the twisted dingy joints in all the towns, you came and I walked into mine. Mm-hmm. Well, what is going on Better. here? Yep. Why are you all talking like Raymond Chandler women? Oh, good question. Oh, yeah, we got that idea. Yeah. Good, 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 good question, Mark. Or should we say Mickey Shade? Mm. Oh. Mm. My. Yeah, shady, so shady. God. Shady, Kevlar. Shady. shady, yeah. Oh shady. my God. So shady. How long do you think you could keep that from us, mm. Mark? How long do you think you could keep us in the dark? Well, I feel very betrayed. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but hey, I, in my defense, I tried to make all of you look just incredible. Uh, no, I tend to disagree, Mark. I agree with Rose for a change. I would agree with you, Mark. You made, uh, I love you, Vit. You've been making money off of our stories for a long time, Mark, and we're tired of it. I want a cut of that. Yeah, maybe we need a cut. I just enjoyed being Pedro, the international smuggler. He was incredibly sexy, it's true, Carlos, but Thank still. You. Uh, and, uh, well, I, I, hey, I cleared this all with my publisher. He assured me there was not going to be an issue. But look, if I can help the town, I will pitch in. I will help the town. I will patch. I will get us trumpets instead of bugles if that's what it takes. Wait There's enough royalty. You cleared it with your publisher? I don't remember you clearing it with all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great, Mark. I want you to sign my copy. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, get you to sign first edition. I think I've got one in the back. How wonderful. Oh, I wonder what that's worth. Hmm. About 75 bucks. Oh, huh? what? That's a lot. $75. How much are you making on this deal? Enough to not worry about actually selling books. I loan them out to whoever asks because I don't have to worry about making any money off All right, you do lend out more books than you sell, but still. still. Frankly, I'm just a little hurt that you kept this from us. Okay, well, that's, that's fair. But I tried to capture the essence of each of you. I mean, Louise, you have never taken anything from anyone. You have always stood up proud and strong and tall, and you were who you were. You sing, you make your music, and I can't help but imagine that if some idiot from Kenai tried to get to the wrong side of you, you wouldn't drive him face forward straight into the high registers of your piano. I would very much do that. He captured me perfectly. I don't I mean, know why you guys Joey, are complaining. Joey, you are always trying to get at the heart of things, always trying to get at the truth of things. And Rose, okay. Violet, yeah, on the surface, she looks like a typical noir heroine. 
But on the other hand, when I look at you, you're looking for something. It's great that you portrayed Louise as this tough, strong woman and Denise as this amazing mountain climber. And yeah, Joey's got this great sense of duty and responsibility and research. And even Reggie, he was always this good cop in town who was helping everybody out. Throughout all these stories, Mark, Violet does nothing but stand there looking pretty, waiting for Jack to rescue her in terrible situations. And Yes, Noir, I work in a certain series of conventions. That's always going to happen. We're always going to have the bad woman looking to go good. We're always going to have the cop who was the, who was the bad cop on a day that you really needed to have a good one handy. I'm sorry, but I don't think I want to be part of your book series anymore. Rose, why don't you come with me back to my bungalow? I will put on some Sergio Mendez music on the stereo, and you can tell me all about your life in California and produce. Let's go, Carlos. Yeah, have a great time. Well, I think that we should add your books to our new town library. I just have a favor to ask. Go right ahead. Could you actually write me into one of your books? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And maybe Denise could have a couple more dogs? All right. So we all forgive Mark? Oh, come on, everybody. Poor Mark. I mean, you know, as Mickey Shade said, let's forgive everyone the secrets that they keep. Oh. Yes. Come here, yes. you big lug. Oh, yes. Thanks, Bert. We forgive you, Mark. Tierra Musu for everyone. Yay! Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Broken Alaska. It was produced at the studios of Space 101 and starred Charney Rose D'Andrea as Denise, Michael Crowley as Mark, Lisa Kaufman as Louise and Kitty, Mike Fuller as Bert, Carlos, and the announcer, Julie Bragg as Heather, Carol Sparer as Joey, and Taylor Edwards as Annika. It was directed by Carrie Aguila from an idea by Carrie Aguila. Detective novel excerpts by Michael Crowley, sound design by Mike Fuller, and music by Audionautics.com. Visit us on Facebook at Broken AK and download all past episodes for free from iTunes. We tell you what's coming up next time, but since it's improvised, sweetheart, you'll know as soon as we do.